my mom and dad uh, moved to Blue Ridge in uh, about 1941-42. Uh, dad came here as the county agricultural agent. And uh, they bought the orchard in 1943 from Dr. Lloyd, who owned the drugstore in Blue Ridge at that time. There was just a small orchard here, about 25 to 30 acres of fruit. Uh, concentrated around the old building that people see up on the hill. That was the main location. My dad was interested in fruit. He was an agronomist when he came out of the University of Georgia. Uh, he worked some for the farmer's home and some other agencies before, during the war, and went before he became the county agent. My dad was a very innovative person, so it didn't take him long to start trying out new varieties. Uh, most of the varieties that were here at the time he bought the orchard, most people would never have heard of. He was not the kind of person you would see out here working in the orchard. That was more my mother. She took care of selling the apples. She didn't manage the crews. Dad would put the crews to work in the morning, and then he'd go off to work, and then he'd come back in the afternoon, check with the guys. If there was any questions, mother would track him down somewhere over in the basin and ask him. Otherwise, she would handle the selling of the apples during the season. So they had a good team. As Dad said, marry you somebody to make you a living. That's what he did. <laughs> of course, I grew up in the orchard. My brother, my sister, and I, we all grew up living right in the middle of the orchard. We worked in the orchard. We were always from a little, the tractor that's sitting in the orchard right now. I drove it when I was a kid. I would end up going to the field with the guys that were working then, Willie Patterson, Luke Patterson. There, at one time we had about eight or nine of the Patterson brothers that worked for us at the same time. And uh, I followed Willie around uh, as a young kid. And Willie's the guy that actually taught me how to prune apple trees and do those things. Because like I say, my dad was off doing all the other stuff and thinking up all the things that needed to be done and he would think up these projects, but it was up to Willie and the other guys to put them into play as far as the orchard was concerned. And he would give them a few pointers on how to prune, but then he would be gone and we would have to do the work. I went to North Georgia in 1967, and I transferred after about two years because I, by that time I knew I wanted to major in uh, horticulture or something in the sciences. I also continued my ROTC at Georgia, from North Georgia. I graduated as, as a regular army officer, uh, just, you know, one of the people that were going to make a career out of the army, and at that time I thought that was what I was going to do first. Sandra and I were married while we were at the University of Georgia. She, went, she started out at Young Harris College, and we got married when she transferred to the University of Georgia. So in 1967, we went to Clemson. And uh, after finishing my master's, I realized that the military was gonna have to be done. And I had been in school for a pretty long period of time and I decided the best thing to do is go ahead and get that over with. So in 1969, I went on into the Army. I ended up in Germany and then Sandra was able to accompany me. We spent the next three years or so in Germany and Europe. It was very interesting. We saw some of the country, but I saw a lot of apple orchards and different ways of doing while we were there also. We came home in 1973. Sandra uh, got a job teaching at that time. And uh, at first we thought, uh, you know, Sandra might help us here in the orchard, and she did on weekends and things. But it was, uh, my mother was still very active, so we figured it would be better that we didn't depend totally on the orchard being as risky a business as it is, and it's still that way today, by the way. Uh, so I followed Dad's advice again with my wife, and she got her a job, and so she helped support us so I could farm. And that's basically how that worked out. And she had a great career here in education in Fanning County. So it worked out for both of us. I always like to think 
that we were, it was the apples we grew and the things like that. But I, I believe today it's the fact that we're willing to try and do new, new things. We're constantly uh, looking at new varieties. We're trying not to just say, well, we're growing this same variety. We're going to grow it every year, and we've been growing it every year for 50 years. Well, there are some varieties that way. But we're always looking for something that's a little better, a little easier to grow, grows a little better, tastes better. And we can tell because we let our customers taste, and they tell us what they want. But I guess when we started diversifying into making pies and things like that, that really opened up a whole new door. And so our juice, our pies, bakery type stuff, and our uh, market, the things that we do in our market, all contribute to the whole of Mercier Orchards. Any one part, whether it be the growing of the apples or the cooking of the pies or selling somebody a jar of jelly, it all works together to make Mercier Orchards what it is. Uh, as a place to come and we hope our people uh, communicate this and we hope that people enjoy talking to our people. They're all part of one big family.